welcome in this class we will talk about the economic models and the basis that's the real numbers that we would understand now whenever we talk about economic model a very primary thing to understand is any economic model is a real is we could say a abstraction from the real world so what's exactly happening in the real world cannot be replicated in an economic model so what we try to do for our simplification is we have a analytical framework where we try to focus on a theoretical basis and this theoretical basis could either be mathematical or non mathematical when we say mathematical it would include a set of equations and that's what we do under mathematical economics so in this series of lectures where we'll be focusing on mathematical economics our sole focus would be understanding how we can simplify the analy analytical framework into the mathematical aspects or the theoretical framework into a mathematical aspects so when we proceed with mathematical aspects we have three things that we understand the variable the cons uh, the constants and the parameter so let's talk about the variable first variable is simply anything that varies the price the profit the revenue the cost all of these all of these vary and when they vary we call them as variables but when i take any variable and there is a coefficient to that variable we call it as constant so constant is an antithesis of variable it does not vary let's say you have cost is equal to 80 plus 10 quantity okay so what is 10 here so 10 here is a constant for that quantity that's taken into account and this constant as we said is antithesis to variable it does not vary on the other hand parameters are exogenous variable so before we understand parameters let's talk about two types of variables those are endogenous variables and exogenous variables let's first understand endogenous variables endogenous variables are those whose solutions are seeked within the model let's say i want to understand the market determination for t so what would i have is the demand and the supply of t and based on that i would determine the price for the t so this is the endogenous variable so what are the endogenous variables the demand for C, uh, t the supply for t but you also have the substitutes so what is a substitute for t a substitute for t would be coffee so coffee is an exogenous variable when i say the production in the coffee or the demand of the coffee affects the t then this coffee becomes an exogenous variable similarly you have complements so you have t and sugar as a complement so the price of the sugar when it varies it would affect the t the demand for the t and therefore sugar also is an exogenous variable it's not directly into the demand supply and the price determination model for t but it is affecting the behavior of a consumer so preferences of the consumer is again an exogenous variable the number of buyers that are involved is again an exogenous variable so all these are exogenous variables the solutions are outside the model so whenever i am talking about t but i am taking into account coffee or sugar those are substitutes or complements but they are outside the model of t and therefore they are considered as exogenous variables parameters now coming on to those these exogenous uh, variables when we try to include them within the model for example when i say this price is being determined by the changes in the coffee and that coffee i'm trying to bring in my equation or my model then what would be the condition would be a parameter so another example could be when i'm talking about automobile sale and i'm trying to bring in the price of gasoline so based on the price on the of the gasoline 
the sale of the automobiles would, would vary but that price of the gasoline actually is an exogenous variable i am trying to bring it into the model and therefore it's considered as a parameter so you have variables constants and parameter the next important thing is equations and identities under equations we have three types of equations the first is the definitional equation which holds true by the definition so the identity between two alternate expressions have exactly the same meaning so for example i say profit is a function of revenue minus cost and that stands true be it here be it somewhere else and that's what is a definitional equation the next is a behavioral equation behavioral equation explains that the variable behaves in response to the changes in the variable so let's say the cost is equal to 80 plus 10 quantities as we already discussed but there could be another equation where i say cost is equal to 120 plus quantity square now let's say my quantity varies from 1 to 10 so in the first equation when my quantity is equal to 1 my cost is equal to 80 plus 10 and that's 90 in the second equation my quantity would be sorry would be 120 my cost would be 120 plus 1 square and that's 121 so in both the cases i have different cost and my cost secured would depend on the equation that i have chosen so that's the behavioral equation where variables behave in response to the changes in the variables that are caused the next is equilibrium constant equilibrium constant when i say quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied so that's an equilibrium of market that we talk about so you have a demand supply curve that we talk about and that's the equilibrium of the market similarly when i talk about savings is equal to investment i am talking about a equilibrium of national income model so that's an equilibrium constant uh, uh, basically a model requires a prerequisite to attain an equilibrium and that's really really important now we come up with numbers so i start with number one two three four and these are all natural numbers now what i do is i add zero to it so these become the whole numbers now what i do is i add negative numbers to it so minus one minus two zero one two three so these become integers now these are all integers so natural numbers whole numbers are part of integers now when i say any number in the form p by q where q is not equal to 0 is a fraction so 1 by 2 1 by 4 2 by 3 minus 1 by 2 so all these are fractions these integers and fractions together are what are known as rational numbers now understand carefully there are there is a number line okay on this number line you have sorry on this number line you have 0 1 2 in between i have half let's say okay so you have fractions you have the negative numbers all these are what they are known as rational numbers but there is a gap from 0 to half there is a gap i can have more fractions in between but still there would be gap those gaps are filled by what they are filled by irrational numbers so rational numbers and irrational numbers together form the complete system and that system is what is known as real numbers so rational numbers are non-repeating non-terminating for example pi is equal to 3.1415 so the numbers are neither repeating nor they are ending they keep on going so a real number is important because real numbers are the only numbers which are continuous so let's say from 0 to 1 if i break somewhere there is no gap there is a number that would be identified and therefore only real numbers are continuous and this concept would be very very useful when we will understand continuity later in our uh, higher topics under mathematical economics so we have another uh, again i explain as, sim as simple as that you have real numbers 
these real numbers could be identified as rational numbers or irrational numbers irrational numbers are non repeating non terminating however rational numbers could be further classified under integers and fractions integers could be whole numbers natural numbers negative numbers so all of those together form the integers real numbers are the only numbers which are continuous because whenever you are taking into account let's say only rational numbers so you would include only 0 half 1 so the intermittent numbers there is gap so these become discontinuous this gap is filled only by the irrational numbers so whenever you have rational number plus irrational number you would have the real numbers that would be formed and that would be the whole set that we would understand so this was a very fundamental lecture on mathematical economics we'll be bringing many more topics for you so stay tuned have a wonderful day